Scattered across all seven seas, the UK Overseas Territories are home to a rich diversity of invertebrates, from some of the rarest in the world to some of the largest and most spectacular. The Caribbean Territories are heavily developed, yet amongst the holidaymakers and residents, there's space for creatures that pass their lives unnoticed by us. Where mangrove forests have escaped development, hordes of fiddler crabs emerge at low tide. The males use their enlarged claw to signal to rival males and to impress passing females. But twice a day, their homes are flooded as the tide sweeps in, transforming their world into an underwater forest. Most retreat to the bottom of their burrows to escape the notice of hungry fish. But a few seem so preoccupied with their displays they continue underwater, on the prop roots of the mangroves. Since many of the overseas territories are small, isolated islands without large land predators, they're great places for crabs. One of the most unlikely lives here, on remote Ascension Island, in the center of the equatorial Atlantic. It couldn't be more of a contrast to the lush landscapes of the Caribbean. Yet these jagged lava shores are the breeding beaches of ascension land crabs. They've trekked down from the central peak in the island, many thousands of them, though they remain hidden. At their spawning sites such as this one, the crabs hide away during the heat of the day amongst these cool rocks where it's moist. But then when the night comes, they really become active. <laughs> Under cover of darkness, the females venture onto the beaches. They're carrying huge numbers of eggs beneath their shell, and now they release them into the sea as waves break over them. Their larvae will drift on the ocean currents, which is how they found this tiny speck of land in the center of the ocean. But there's some even more curious crustaceans here. Much of the wildlife is localized to tiny areas. These little ponds here, this is the entire habitat for two species of shrimps. This is the only place in the world where they occur. Their nearest relatives live in seawater caves in the Caribbean. But how they got here is a mystery. One suggestion is that they used caves in underwater volcanoes, seamounts as stepping stones. Life, it seems, can find even the most remote places. 1,300 kilometers to the southeast lies St. Helena, just as remote, but it's much older than Ascension, and so there's been more time for animals to discover this place, and once here, many evolved into new species. At least 460 unique invertebrates are found on this one island and occur nowhere else in the world. But introduced non-native species and grazing animals have caused huge problems for much of St. Helena's native wildlife. Between invasive plants and hungry mouths, St. Helena's unique vegetation has been pushed out from all but the most remote parts of the island, like these scrubwood bushes. Or in some cases, species have been wiped out completely.
And with these plants went many of the endemic invertebrates that depended upon them. Some of the invertebrates are extremely rare, with just a few hundred individuals left, or less in some species. Among this incredible diversity are the golden sail spider, with its shining triangular abdomen, the blushing snail, the scrubwood leafhopper, the Hellenian brown lacewing, the common red scarab beetle, the vulture leafhopper found only along the high central ridge, and Loveridge's hoverfly. Conservation teams are working hard to restore native plants and manage habitats for rare invertebrates, and not a moment too soon. The spiky yellow woodlouse is down to its last few individuals, one of the rarest animals on the planet. And for some, it's already too late. St. Helena had a giant earwig, now only a museum curiosity. We still don't know the full story of St. Helena's unique invertebrates. In these remote, and spectacular landscapes, new discoveries are still being made. In 2015, two new species of parasitic wasps were found. One, named after the exiled Napoleon Bonaparte, who spent the last six years of his life here. I'm not sure what the emperor would have made of this honor. He hated St. Helena's isolation. But it was the same isolation that created this biological treasure house, one like no other. A world away from St. Helena, in the center of the Indian Ocean, the British Indian Ocean Territory is made up of seven huge coral atolls of the Chagos Archipelago. Of all of the overseas territories, this one is a kingdom of crabs. On the rocky shores, Sally Lightfoot crabs scavenge for anything edible. Sandy beaches are the domain of ghost crabs. and the forest floor in the interior of the islands is alive with land hermit crabs, wearing second-hand shells that have washed up from the reefs offshore. One species of crab that rules supreme on these islands. It's called the coconut crab, and it's the largest land arthropod alive today. Coconut crabs live across the tropical Indian and Pacific Oceans, but most of the really big specimens have been killed for food. It's only in really remote places, like the Chagos Archipelago, that these giants, with legs spanning nearly a meter, still survive. As their name suggests, they live on coconuts, and their huge claws are big enough to smash their way through the tough husk. Armed and armored, they have little to fear from predators, except humans. But young coconut crabs are easier prey. But since they're related to land hermit crabs, they can find an empty shell to use for protection until they're fully grown. They also have to find coconuts already broken open by the adults.
For such a big animal, they're remarkably good climbers and can reach the top of coconut palms. On the UK mainland, a three centimetre long spider in the bar causes panic. But the overseas territories are home to some of the most spectacular invertebrates on the planet. The Britain's Treasure Islands book explores the unique wildlife, cultures and history of all of the UK overseas territories. Visit britainstreasureislands.com for details. In sincere thanks to Lord Ashcroft for funding the donation of one copy of the Britain's Treasure Islands book to every secondary school across the UK and her overseas territories. Thanks also to all Kickstarter backers and all sponsors and partners for making the 40 mini documentaries possible.